My name is Tim, and today I'd like to introduce you to something called Melodic Math. You might have heard about it. It was coined by a producer called Max Martin. You can do some research into him. He's got almost his main number one hits as Paul McCartney and John Lennon. So he's a pretty interesting person to research if you're into writing. So today I'd like to show you this melodic math formula from what I understand it to be, because it's still speculation about the full formula of how it works. So I'd like to just show you in my niche, which is like deep house, tech house, techno and stuff like that, and how the hooks are written using these formulas to make um, melodies, bass lines, leads, hooks, even vocals. And I'm pretty sure this will work across all genres. Um, you just need to go experiment it for yourself, depending on what genre you're in. But the melodic math formula that I'll show you shortly will be pretty self-explanatory. And hopefully you'll get it and then you go apply it to whatever you want in whatever genre. So first of all, I want to listen to this bass line from a song by NTFO and Carmen called Nobody Else. Bit of a deep house track. And it goes something like this. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that was the uh, bass line. So I've recreated the MIG notes here. Um, and in case you're wondering why only the white notes are showing there, it's because I've put in all the notes for A minor, which is the scale of this song, and just folded it. So that's why you're only seeing that many notes. So let's listen to this real quick. <laughs> As you can see, um, there is you'll see patterns emerging here, and you know that's not unheard of in music. Usually, you use repetition. So now I want to apply the melodic math formula to sort of explain and deconstruct it. So first of all, we can say this motif here, and a motif is the shortest, most memorable piece of a melody. Um, so we can say that this motif here is a. Uh, or our first motive, or the leading motive, but I prefer to label it A, just simply. So then this note, these notes here, this motive is just two notes, and we can say this is B. So we can see the patterns merge, you've got A, you got B, you got A, you got A again, you got B, you got A, you got B, you got A. So this bit here you can say is also A. Um, but it's turned off, it doesn't happen in the composition. Um, and this creates the space and the rest. And what the producer has done here is turned off what is the same amount of space between an A and a B, creating a, a variation. So let's get down to the melodic math. So these are 16th notes, and we can express these as being uh, one. So one equal a 16th note, or one equals the length of a 16th note. We can say this note here, is two as it represents double the length of a 16th note or an 8th note so two equals an 8th note or two equals the length of two 16th notes so then again here this is two two and this is one 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 two so if we were to quickly take a screenshot of this and do some drawing on it to make it a bit easier to understand it would look something like this so as you can see i've I circled or squared around the a motif and i've written the rhythm in one, 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 two, and that makes A. And then the B portion is two, two, makes the B. And you can see a pattern emerges. Uh, you've got A, you've got a space, you've got B, you've got AA, you've got B, you've got A, you've got space, you've got B. So that's the same as that, essentially. And then A, but then there's nothing happening after. It's just A, B, but it's turned off. But if you counted the notes that are turned off, it would be A, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B. Very, repeti very repetitive. And it would look something like this in terms of its structural formula. So if we go back to the rhythm one first, I want you to understand this. Um, one equals the 16th note, and two equals an eighth note, or a double a 16th note. Now, if you want the screenshots, I can send them to you. I'll put them actually in the description so you can uh, just download them and look at them whenever. So. Back to the structural formula, as we can see, what we've got is A plus A plus B four times, but 
the A here is turned off and the A here is turned off, but the A here is turned on, but then the A and the B here is turned off. So we have repetition within two motives that are just rotating between each other in an A, A, B fashion. It's super simple. And then if we look here, we have the contour, uh, the melodic contour, and this will sort of keep it interesting without it, because if it was just playing the root note over and over again, it wouldn't sound too interesting. But as you can see, it does the root note, A, and then moves up to B, which is the second interval, then up to the C, which is the third interval, and then it resolves back to the one, and then we move to the six, and then to the seven. And then you can see that it comes in this sort of contour, repeating over and over again. Right then, so just to recap, there's three portions to this melodic math formula. First is the rhythm, and the rhythm is dictated by one equal equals a sixteenth note, and it duplicates as you would expect. So two is an eighth, three would be a sixteenth note plus an eighth note. Uh, and then the you've got the structural formula, which is A plus A plus B, but there's variations within that that turn it off. And then of the contour again, so one plus one to two to three to one to six to seven. So it goes up then down and it will do that in like in a wavy motion. Right, so the next portion we're going to use is this melody. So that was the melody, and I've got the MIDI notes here, I've drawn them out, and I'll explain this through just like I explained the bass line, so it'll give us another idea of how this is deconstructed and how we can apply the melodic math formula to it. And what we can first see is that these motives happen in intervals of every four bars. So this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one, and this is the fourth one. Now every single one starts on A, which is the root note of the song. I believe this will give it stability, um, but it travels differently every single time. So let's look into how this looks on a screenshot with some drawings on it. I did, they're very pretty. So here we go. Um, as you can see, the A, oops, as you can see, the A is a combination of four plus three plus one plus four. The four being, oh, in this particular instance, the four, is a quarter note because this is over uh, 16 bars. So in this particular instance, one is equal to a quarter note, four equals a one bar. So we got four, which is one bar, we've got three, which is the space of three quarter notes, the one, which is just a quarter note, and the four, which is another bar. And then the B motive here is also the space of a bar or a four. And as you can see, uh, the A plus the B equals 16, which is a factor of six, uh, four, four signatures. So that's what gives it its melodic balance. And then you can see this happens A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Now you may notice on the third one, there was actually a note taken out. This uh, little one note here doesn't happen in the third one. And I think this is what gives it, uh, it disbalances it and gives it some edge, some spice, some tension, which is pretty cool. So the next thing I want to talk about is the contour of these notes. So this first A here, it just moves down, down, down. Every every step is down. And on the second one, the step is down, but then it goes up and then back down and then down again. So you see this contrast is not just following the same structure every time, which just gives it variation and difference. So we go down, 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 down and then down, up, down, down. And this one we go up and then down. And this is the first time we hear the B in the composition, which gives it a lot of spice, a lot of interest. And on this final one, we move down, up, down, down. Same as this one here. We don't return to the same note, to the slight variation, but it's still super repetitive because the A's are the same rhythmic pattern, the B's are the same rhythmic pattern. It's just the contour slightly different. So 
yeah, that's pretty much how melodic math works on a very basic level. There's much more to it, which I'll go into a later video if you enjoy these ones. So now let's make uh, our own melody using melodic math. So the first thing we want to do is open up Notepad and we say A equals and B equals. Now we can say something super simple like um, uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, that gives 8. And then we could say B equals 1 plus 1 plus 2, which equals 4. Together they make 12, so we have the space of 4 left, which could you know, be B. So then we could say A plus B plus B, because that will equal 16. Um, and then we can have variations of B being turned off in different positions. So in a four variations over four bars, we'd have something like this. A plus A plus silent B plus B. And then we go to A plus B plus B. And then A plus lowercase, oh sorry, silent B plus B normally. And then A, B, B we turned off. So this is where it's going to get pretty funky. So let's go over here. Let's make our own MIDI clip and make it four bars long. We're going to put in all the A minor notes, just for simplicity's sake. So that's all the white notes from A. Turn those off. Put them, uh, hit the fold up here. Put those down like that. Um, so our first motif is two, 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 two. So these are put these to sixteen, and then. A 2 is the 8th note, or double the length of a 16, so it would be an 8th. We make 4 of those, and that is our A. And then we have our B, which is a 1, 1, 2, and it would look something like this. And then it's going to sound something like this, without any key change, so please bear with me. Absolutely terrible at the moment, I know, but bear with me. <laughs> so, let's make this structural formation we've just made. So this is the rhythm portion, and this is our structural formation. So the first thing we need to do is have B again here, but it's turned off. That would be the lowercase b. As you can see, this is A, lowercase b, and then uppercase b. And then in here, we have the B turned on this time, you see we have it turned on, so we have A plus B plus B. And then here we're back to the A, B, B, but with the lowercase b. And then here again, we have just the A turned on, sorry, just the A turned on here, and the two Bs turned off. So now our rhythm over four bars sounds like this. Okay, so starting to sound like something right so now we've got that we need to think about a melodic contour so we could go down and then up here and then down so we're back to the a or we could just go shoot all the way down and slowly raise back up we could shoot all the way up and slowly raise back down which i quite like that one let's um let's go for something like that Okay, so I had a little play around, added a kick drum, and this was the result from literally what we just wrote up in Notepad like that. Uh, the contour I did sort of on the fly, um, I sort of went from the tonic, went up a little bit, then came back down the tonic. It's not actually that interesting in terms of contour. I probably could do a lot more work on it, much like you would if you started using this method. Um, never settle for something shit. Always keep playing your melodies until you get something that fucking sounds awesome. But the melodic math will help you get to a pretty good point where you have something structured, something balanced, and something you can just tweak with um, to get a really cool melody. Anyway, this is what it sounds like. Okay, so... I'm going to write something a bit more complex this time. Let's start with the A portion, which is uh, two twos, that's two eighths, so there's the length of two sixteenths. And then the B is a one, 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 one. And then the C is a four, and two twos. So it looks something like this. This is the A, this is the B, and this is the C. 
and you see they're all contrasting quite well they're um different sizes different lengths different rhythms this one being st a pretty steady eight note eighth note and an eighth note this one being a steady four sixteenth notes but this one having a sort of decay or a, sorry a growth more like because it speeds up at the end by doubling we'll talk more about decay and melodic growth in another video if you fancy but for now let's pick well, first of all, let's listen to this rhythm. Cool. So it's a rhythm. It fits. Rhythm's not hard to tap out, I suppose. But if you don't have Im any musical bones in your body, this is a pretty good method of uh, getting it done. So let's think about our contour. Um, this B here, we could have something that moves from the 3 to the 5, maybe going up to the 7 and hitting 6, 7, and then hitting the uh, back on the high tonic up on the C. Cool, so I've just made this and I've put a little sound on it and it sounds something like this. So I've created another motif here using A, B again. The A is 2 plus 2 and the B is 1, 1, 1, 1, 4. So the 2 being an 8th and the 1 being a 16th and the 4 here being a quarter. Um, all in all, that adds up to 4 and that adds up to 8, giving it a total of 12. So if we add another A on the end, we get a compilation of 16. So now we can write our structure being something like maybe A plus B, and then the A turned off, and then A plus B plus A, so it's all turned on, and then A plus B plus the A turned off, and then uh, just the A with the B and the A turned off on that one. So first of all, let's put in our A, which is the two notes like Not much to it. And then the B which is four of those, and then a four. So it looks like this. And then we can put our A in here, as again, because we've got A plus B plus A, but in in the rotation, the A is turned off here, so we turn this off, and then we duplicate this. Oops, we duplicate that. Uh, and this one, it's all turned on. And then we repeat the same again with the A turned off there, so as you can see. And then in the last one, we duplicate all that, and we turn off the A and the B. So it's like that. Pretty simple. Uh, so this is our rhythm. Cool. So now let's think about some melodic contour, what direction we want to go. We could have this doing all kinds of crazy shit actually this is where it helps to experiment and sort of just go crazy with your imagination of how you want this to be like really energetic do you want it to jump up two octaves or do you want it to just sort of loiter around and not move too far from the tonic but let's have a little play around and uh, see what we come up with cool so i've played around with that made a little melody um so this is what it sounds like So I wouldn't say this is particularly like a, an amazing melody. It's not got the coolest sound either. So this is where you would probably spend the next 12 hours uh, tweaking it until you get sound of the way you want it, basically. And if you're not happy with the rhythm of it, you could just go back to the notepad and draw something else out and give it a go. Anyway, I hope this tutorial has given you some slight insights into melodic math. Um, there's way more we can cover. There's way more to it. There is another lad on YouTube goes by the name of Philip Reese, I believe, who goes into this, but he does not do it in a DAW environment. He um, just does PowerPoint slideshows, so it's a bit hard to follow. That's why I wanted to make ones that are more tuned towards a DAW. But um, if you want to see the content now, go over to his page and check it out. Um, it's really insightful. 
a really clever guy. Uh, so yeah, hope, it, hope this all helps. I'll catch you guys soon and let me know if you want more.